I'll tell you what. I'll start with Mr. F8. Who is F8? See, um, Citizens United. This election is going to be a four billion dollar election first time. Under Citizens United, as you know, corporations are citizens, uh, and just like you know, America, you know, just like any other citizens, their kids can go to Iraq and get their legs blown off. Yeah. So who is F8? There's a group of billionaires. Um, there are 37 billionaires having breakfast last, about two Fridays ago. I tried to join them. <laughs> well, I, 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 was, I was hungry. It's in New York, 37 billionaires with Mitt Romney, uh, but I didn't bring my checkbook. But who was there? The Iceman, the Vulture, the Snake. I didn't give them these names. I didn't give them these names. Their happy bankers did. And, you know, I, um, but missing, I was hoping to run into F8 because, see, there is the 37 billionaires have an organization called Restore Our Future, a super PAC, which is backing Mr. Romney right now. And this super PAC of billionaires, um, but had several $1 million donations. That's kind of the cost. That's what you pony up. That's just to bring the chips to the table. And so it had the snake, Paul the, the Snake uh, Singer. Excuse me, the, that was um, uh, John the Snake Paulson, uh, Paul the Vulture Singer. I don't want to mix the carcass eaters with the predators. <laughs> um, but there's a million dollars from F8, LLC. So I want to know what F8, F8 LLC, who's giving a million bucks? So I look up, it's, it's a limited liability corporation. I want to know who these guys are that are going to have this much influence with a possible president of the United States. And uh, F8, uh, I looked it up hard, it has sales of $80,000 a year. So I thought that the million dollar donation was pretty damn generous. But I want to, so then who is so generous? Who is F8? And I look it up, and F8, as it turns out, after some digging, is run by a Mr. Diego Villasenor. <laughs> ring a bell, ring an explosion, he's an assassin. He's a killer, a drug dealer. and a character from Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> it's true. And it's perfectly legal. If you think Supreme Court decisions are still legal. A million bucks from that two-dimensional character. And then there's, you know, um, Charles Manson and Sons. The Zeta Gang, LLC, Al-Qaeda, Inc. As long as they got 20 bucks, they can buy your White House. See, because that's what hasn't been mentioned. You don't have to breathe or be a citizen. They get to influence the game, but then some people won't. Let me just read you some numbers. We're going to get there. At the beginning of Billionaires and Ballot Ban, it says, how to steal an election in nine easy steps. 767,023 provisional ballots were cast and not counted. 1,451,116 ballots were spoiled. How do you spoil a ballot? You leave it out of the fridge? What? Not counted. 488,136 absentee ballots. Hey, mail-in state, Washington. 400, I want to read that again, 488,000. 136 mail-in ballots mailed in never counted in 2008. It will be quadruple this year. Thanks, Washington. Okay, now, add it up, 2,706,275 votes were cast and not counted in 2008 election. The one that wasn't stolen. I know you think it wasn't stolen because the skinny dude won. That's not how we figure democracy in America. It's when, you know what democracy, the definition of democracy is when you count the votes, okay? 
not when you beat the vote thieves. I'm not here to support Obama or his mama. I'm not, don't care, okay, frankly. It's not about whether one's better than the other. I just want the guy who gets inaugurated is the guy that got the votes. That hasn't been happening in America. We've gotten out of that habit. There's also purging, caging, rejecting five, 3.7 million people showed up to the vote polling places and they were not allowed to vote. American citizens, hey, that's 5.9 million votes and voters cast on account. Now, where do I get this? I used to be a statistician. You heard that first book? Didn't know about that one. That was published by the United Nations. I used to lecture at Cambridge University as a statistician, economist, and I just simply looked at the statistics at the U.S. Elections Assistance Commission. It's theft in plain sight. They not only keep records of who votes and how many people vote in America, they actually keep records of who doesn't get to vote in America, who lost their vote, and the number of votes that were just thrown in the dumpster. Um, once I started looking, the Republican um, Congress immediately removed all funding for the collection of those statistics, closed those offices. There's not one single elections commissioner serving right now. Now, it's not, now of course, my colleagues here on this side of the electronic Berlin Wall in America could have looked, because you know, there's that great investigative reporter, Yogi Berra, who once said, it's amazing what you could see when you look. <laughs> so Robert F. Kennedy, Bobby and I looked, added up, calculated, and that's the official numbers. And here it comes. How does this happen? Now, if it was, see, they've known this a long time. There's glitches and gloops and stuff happens, you know. There's a tear, there's a, wrong, there's a mark on your ballot. It doesn't go through the machine. You lose it. Your chad gets hung. Okay, you know, chad happens, you know. Okay. <laughs> Whose chads get hung? Officially, they track that one, too. You have Civil Rights Commission, Dr. Philip Klinkner, I worked with here, Harvard University, and he um, calculated for the government, and he said, the chance of your vote spoiling, that is, a glitch of the 1.4 million ballots out there that are glitched, the chance that you get glitched, that you get spoiled and not counted, is 900% higher if you're African American than if you're a white voter, 500% higher if you're a Latino voter, and if you are an American Indian, if you're a Native American, forget about it. Forget about it. We don't give people smallpox, blankets with smallpox. We give them crap shoptronic voting machines. They just don't count the vote. Okay, now, what that's called is apartheid. Okay, it's Jim Crow in cyberspace. Okay, it's, well, I shouldn't say Jim Crow. It's now Dr. James Crow data analyst. How does this happen, and who does it happen to, and who did it? See, I, I used to be a detective. You can tell by the hat, right? <laughs> I, I was an actual detective for the government, the big racketeering cases, right? And, um, and you know, I'm smelling this stuff. And, and I look at F8, I look at the cartoon with his million bucks, and I'm thinking, where does this begin? And I go, I remember this. Citizens United. Is anyone asking which citizens were uniting? <laughs> Started smelling it. And it smelled like oil. So I remember, I go back into my files. I keep old files. In fact, if you read the other book, Vultures Picnic, you'll, you'll actually, and go to vulturespicnic.org, you will see Greg Powell's actual files file cabinets, touch the file cabinet, and they will open up and you will see my files. That's my favorite song. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> Someone should cut it. <laughs> you can turn it off. Oh, you can't turn it off. Okay. Ah, dance and pacemaker. Now, so I'm smelling the oil, and I go back to my files, and pull out the files, and sure enough, I think back to Oklahoma, the Osage Indian Reservation. Oil is missing from the Osage Indian Reservation. It's like, you know, in the middle of nowhere. 
like, you know, uh, a kind of Romney Olympics. And you have to, you may know that one. Um, middle of nowhere. Uh, people don't live too fancy in mobile homes, but they have make a couple bucks from those stripper wells. You know, you see those those metal horses going up and down. Uh, it's not even worth piping, so they bring in trucks. They had a contract with a trucking company, with an oil company, comes in, sucks the oil out of the, uh, out of the tanks that have been sucking up little bits of oil, put down, you know, write down, okay, we took 70 barrels, but they take 80. They go to the next stripper well, they write down, they took 60, they took 70, and so on. So the FBI, is filming this because it's a crime. Okay, now it's oil rustling, theft on an Indian reservation, grand theft, larceny on federal property, racketeering. So I'm looking at this stuff and we're following these guys back. We follow the trucks, we talk to the truckers, and we go back and they're on a loading dock. In Oklahoma, there's a big, tall, white guy, and he's saying, I want more, more overage. Overage is that extra, the 10 barrels. More. The guy standing there is named Charles Koch. Oh. Now, what was interesting, my question was one word. Why? The guy was already, he was born a billionaire. Born a billionaire. You know, he got his money, you know, from dad who found the John Birch Society, who got the old fascist way, right? <laughs> born with a billion. So why was he taking a few bucks from some poor Indian families? And indeed, his one of his top executives asked him that same question. I know, because we had him wired. <laughs> Sorry, I do get a little. <laughs> I liked my work <laughs> at those moments. <laughs> and so he asked him the same question, why? Why would Charles, billionaire, want 50 bucks worth of, swipe $50 worth of oil from an Osage Indian family, and Charles said, and this is a quote, I want my fair share, and that's all of it. <laughs> and that's how we begin that book, Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, because it's not two books. It's the billionaires who are the ballot bandits now. He wants all of it, but why does he need the ballot too? What's going on here? Okay, well, I just said he committed a crime. FBI had tapes, films, you name it, you know? So why is he not in prison? So question, the answer is because if you, he bought, he has to buy the ballot and he begins this way. He owned a couple of U.S. senators. Now, federal prosecutors serve at the pleasure of the state's U.S. senator. So the federal prosecutor for Oklahoma no longer pleasured Senator Don Nichols or nearby Senator Bob Dole. And so the federal prosecutor was removed, replaced with a Koch associate who immediately quashed. And here's, by the way, if you think that that, uh, I kid you not, let's see if I can find, oh, there it is. There it is. They actually wrote up the indictment. There it is. Target 67C in the book, that's Mr. Coke. Coke Industries, theft, racketeering. Enough to put you away from here to the 23rd century. Now, what happened? So they removed the prosecutor, replaced the prosecutor, disbanded the grand jury before they're allowed to see the evidence. They're allowed to see the evidence and he walks, okay, but that's not enough. That's not enough. Remember, they got all that oil and all those trucks. Well, what do you do with the sludge at the bottom? You dump it in rivers, of course. Uh, that's a cheap way. If you want it all, you're not gonna pay to dump the oil in, a, in expensively 
deal with toxic waste. You're just going to open the spigot when no one's looking. Except we were looking. 350 cases of criminal pollution, acts of pollution, federal crime. Again, 350 cases of federal crime. That's a big chunk of change when you get caught, if not pokey time. So what do they have to do? See, one of the tricks you learn in Billionaires and Ballot Band, it's about billionaires, when they commit a crime they, and they decide, okay, they get caught, instead of going, they go straight, not by stopping the crime, but by decriminalizing it, changing the law. They keep doing it, so they change the law. How do you change the law? Well, Coke would have to, you know, rent Congress for a while. So. Suddenly, now we're in the 90s, suddenly there's $25 million worth of ads that go in at the last minute before midterm election, and boom, Republicans are suddenly, for the first time in half a century, take control of the House of Representatives. Newt Gingrich, Contract for America. They needed to find some, some self-dealing little spider with a loose zipper to run it, and they found Newt. And they wrote him a contract, contract for America. They took control of Congress. And the Center for Investigative Reporting said, um, it looks like the contract for America was written for the Kochs to let them off the hook, change the laws, the deregulation laws, et cetera, would decriminalize their behavior. It looks like it was written for the Kochs, but they were wrong. That's not right. It was written by the Kochs. $50 million set up the Heritage Foundation, then they wrote it. Now, then what? Okay. So, but not all those laws, there was still that indictment. That, that indictment came down, 350 criminal acts of pollution. How could they deal with that one? Ooh, even with their Congress. And remember, they elected the Congress with, 20, there was a $25 million payment, but wait a minute. Did I tell you that Cokes and the payment were together? I didn't say a word. You're not paying attention. Now follow. The $25 million was spent by Committee for Our Children's Future, all against Democrats who voted for food stamps to elect Republicans who voted against them. Okay. Now, were there any children involved? No, there were no children. So who? We're protecting our children's future. Well, we don't know, and they accuse Democrats of such things as, in one, in one case, they accuse a guy of, of, be, of constantly getting drunk and beating up his wife. It was true, but that's besides the point. Though they also ran, uh, they did some polling. They would call up people in Kansas, uh, where Jill Docking, uh, the Democrat, was running for Senate, and they would say, you gonna vote for Jill Docking? Yeah, I think so. Going to vote for if we told you that she was Jewish? Don't know. That's what they did. Okay, now. Um, but who were the children? Who, were the, who cared so much about the children? Because at that time, corp you couldn't have hidden donations to campaigns, and you couldn't have not, this was a not-for-profit charity for the children. Not-for-profit charity running ads that sure looked like they were political ads, Sounds like a crime. FBI's back on the case. Federal investigators back on the case. And it goes back, the money goes back. Can't find no children. They can find Triad. You'll see a chapter called The Hunt for Triad. Triad, we find Triad. What's Triad? Triad's the name of the Chinese money laundering game, uh, gang, right? Well, there weren't no Chinese in this one. So back through Triad, which is a screen, and it goes back. Triad turns out to go back to Coke. Industries. Now, problem. This crime was committed by an entity which cannot give money to campaigns, a corporation. And for a good reason, because we don't know who corporations are, right? Like I say, Charles Manson Inc. But what if it was just CMI, right? Okay, now. So now, they've got another charge facing them. 
criminal felonious use of a corporation and criminal felonious use of a not-for-profit for politicking. That's two different charges, two crimes. So what do they do? They have to come up with a Supreme Court that will make it not a crime, no more. All right, now, all right, fine. Supreme Court, Citizens United. Now, who is Citizens they're, they're a tiny group. Now, Citizens United, by the way, Foster Freeze, another billionaire who is in the, the Romney group, he gave a bunch of money to Citizens United, this charity, and every time he'd send a check, within hours, a check of the same size would go to a political candidate. And someone said, wait, that could be money laundering. That's another crime. What's going on here? So it ends up at the Supreme Court. Who is this little group that gets the most expensive lawyer in America, Ted Olson, to argue for, to argue for Citizens United, for corporate giving? It's Ted Olson. Well, he was able to take a break from his day job as counsel to Coke Industries. It's okay, not many Democrats complain, certainly not the Democratic Party, because their chairman, Bob Strauss, is a counsel for Coke Industries. Yeah. It's not about parties. David Koch was gonna run for office himself for governor of Kansas as a Democrat. <laughs> he ran against Ronald Reagan for president, calling Reagan a left-wing socialist in 84. It's true. It's not about parties. Ken Langone, I want you to remember the name of that billionaire who was at that little breakfast. As he said, and he was, I'll give him credit. He said, I, I'm not making a donation to Mitt Romney. I'm not giving him a, I'm not making a million dollar contribution. He says, I'm making an investment, like any other investment. The question is, what's the return? Okay, now, how did the Cokes get out of it? You heard that I was doing investigations of nuclear power companies, racketeers. I, I, I want a $4 billion verdict against some scumballs that, that um, you know what they did? It's hard to imagine this, but they faked the testing for earthquake proofing on nuclear plants. But don't worry, that will never have any effect. <laughs> I was just on Japanese TV yesterday with that. That's in Vulture's Picnic, by the way. Chapter 10. Now, so I went back to my files. I go, what happened? I call the investigations committee, because you know what? There was a, there was a stand up Republican. Name, in fact, you'd know him. If you watch, any, who watches Law and Order? Fred Thompson, who is the, um, who's the prosecutor, right? And I, I, I don't, I haven't watched it, so I don't know what, what, does he use any common phrases? Is there a special phrase that he use, uses, Fred Thompson, uh, when he's the prosecutor on? See, so he plays a prosecutor, he's an actor, and he was, you know, captain on a submarine and all, and he got carried away, and he thought he was a prosecutor. He was chairman of the, of the Senate's Investigations Committee, and he said, oh my God, look, he actually said, the Koch brothers, it looks to me like they've committed a series of felonies. <laughs> Gotta wake up pretty early, get ahead of Fred. <laughs> the FBI's saying, no shit. <laughs> and he said, it's all over the place. But then he also wanted to call in a guy named Bubba Clinton and a lawyer named Hillary Rodham. What was that? See, I just told you about legalizing the illegal. That's the, that's the billionaire game, right? See, the Clintons, you'll read in the book, call, in their chapter called Manchurian Candidates. There's about a million bucks that seemed to come from very far away that went into the Clinton campaign. Uh -huh. See, you're not supposed to take Chinese money. The Riyadi family, Indonesian family, Chinese, who are trying to cut deals with China for their nuclear operations, nuclear power plants, is all involved in a company called Entergy, represented by where, where, a company that was sued by Attorney General Bill Clinton, but defended by a lawyer, Hillary Rodham. All the family. Um, 
gets a little complicated and gets a little felonious doing that. They knew it. So, million bucks. Nine, by the way, you're, did you know that Bill Clinton had 95 meetings with the Riottis while he was president? That means he met with them more than with Chelsea. There's something about those billionaires. So Fred Thompson said, wait, wait, you can't have foreign money in a US election campaign. That's another felony. So he wanted to hold hearings and bust them all. You know, he got that, that badge from, uh, you know, from his uh, acting class. And then Trent Lott, and I investigated. So I said, what the heck happened? It doesn't take long for me to figure this one out. You can figure it out, right? So I called uh, a, a senator who is, knew exactly what happened, who was willing to talk to me. And I spoke to a couple staffers who were willing to talk to me. And they said what was obvious. Trent Lott, Senator Lott, the head of the, uh, the Re Republican Senate leader, went to Thompson and said, not your night. It's not your night, big boy. So they took away all his committee powers. They shut down his investigation of both the Clintons, the Riottis, and the Kochs on the same day. And Thompson resigned from the Senate, but they let him keep his uh, blonde committee counsel, the new Mrs. Thompson. Uh, and um, another, they traded billionaires. They said, we don't do Riotti, they don't do Kochs. That's how it works, see? So everyone has their billionaires. And so if you're true blue, you may be upset reading this book because, yep, there are 37 billion billionaires at Romney's breakfast. There's a fourth of that at Obama's, but they've got enough, okay? Now, that's part of the game, but why? What's going on here and how? So what are they doing now? That's the history. Okay, and the Supreme Court, people didn't notice, were also not only Citizens United saying you could be a corporation is a people that can donate. We can donate, Franken Corpse. You can't, by the way, give more than 2,000, but they can. But, but they also had the speech now and, and uh, decision, and also Republican National Committee, the Federal Election Commission, which said that not-for-profit charities can give unlimited donations and politic, okay? Remember, Committee for Our Children's Future, it just came back. It just came back, and now it's legal. And another chapter and other nights I've been talking about uh, Pat Robertson, but we'll leave that one aside for the moment. You'll just have to get the book, because otherwise we'll be here all night, which will be just too much fun. Uh, but, so what do they do with this? What now? What does it mean for 2012? See, House Steel Election, nine easy steps. It says, Greg Palast investigates the Coke gang, Carl Rove, and their buck buddies. What do we care about Osage Indians and Citizens United and, and Bill Clinton and all that stuff? Okay, the answer, there's two answers. One is data trust, and the other is Themis. Okay, what are these billionaires doing now? Okay. How do they take it out? Now, you were told that Greg Palace is the guy who uncovered how Catherine Harris um, was able, got a database and knocked out tens of thousands of black voters from the voter rolls because they were ex-felons, ex-cons who are not allowed to vote in Florida. And I got the disks and I cracked them and I found Willie Steen a Gulf War veteran, never had a parking ticket, goes to vote with his five-year-old son to give him a lesson in democracy. Boy, did he get it. They said, your dad's a criminal felon, can't vote. It's true. Now, the interesting thing about Willie, even before I met him, I knew he was African-American. Why? Because right next to his name in those Florida voter rolls, it says B-L-A. Next to every black person in Florida, B-L-A on the official voter rolls. Now, they're not guessing. They know what to do. Now, wait, how did it happen? And this is the important thing. People forget how it happens. There was a database that was handed to the state, handed to the state, which had the name 
of all these other felons around the country. Willie Osteen, like, like an Irish O apostrophe. Willie Osteen commits a crime in another state. Willie Steen, Gulf War veteran, BLA, loses his vote, et cetera, et cetera. Now, who did that, by the way? Where do they get these lists? Well, remember I said that Mitt was brunching with billionaires? And I mentioned the name Ken Langone. Who came up with that list? Who came up with the black list? Who came up with the, with the drone hit of tens of thousands of black people? It was Ken Langone, created a database company. Now why? Another billionaire. He didn't need, he didn't need to make a few bucks from some database company, but he did need to get a president. This is how he does it, Ken Langone, right? Now, what did he need it for? Oh, well, a guy named Elliot Spitzer is charging him with insider trading. See, the first thing these guys want is a get out of jail free card. Um, but that, apparently, the uh, change in regime in Washington did not impress um, prosecutor Elliot Spitzer. So um, he was followed uh, by Mr. Langone's people. Believe me, I keep it zipped. Well, not always if you read Vulture's Picnic. <laughs> but I'm not running for anything, I'm running away. Um, and, and there's good reasons, uh, it, you have to read. Yeah, there are really good reasons why I had my pants off in the room with Miss Jamaica in London. <laughs> it was the mirror photographer that seemed to create the problem. But the... Uh, that's how it works. Now, that list, oh that, that was, oh, that was ancient history. In fact, Billionaires and Ballot Bandits is a sequel to The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, which is insane. Why am I writing a sequel to a book about the theft of elections in America? Doesn't anyone get it? I thought people would read it. I'd never have to write a sequel. They say, oh, yeah, that's terrible. Well, instead, Rove, Carl Rove. Now, if you don't know, he's, uh, George Bush, the president, had a nickname for everyone and named uh, a Carl after a flower in Texas, a turd blossom, and Mr. Blossom. Okay. Mr. Blossom is back at it, see? Because right now in Florida, you'll see in Billionaires and Ballot Band, it's the latest list of ex cons. And you know what? It's amazing what you can see when you're looking. Okay. Thomas John Brown commits a crime. And believe it or not, there is a Thomas Brown in Florida on the voter rolls. <laughs> See, one nice thing about going after black folk, they make it really easy. They all have the same names, right? They use that. They dig statistics. Thomas ja John Brown commits a crime. Thomas Brown, BLA, loses his vote in Florida. Okay, now, and one of my favorites in here, uh, Robert Moore commits a crime. And Bobby Moore, see they have this fancy algorithms that they use, so that Robert, when they, he re-registers as Bobby, they get him, right? So Robert Moore commits a crime and Bobby Moore loses her vote. B-O-B-B-I, Mrs. Bobby Moore. But they got, they got it right because it was both were BLA. Okay, now, thousands and thousands and thousands of names. By the way, the New York Times ignored it the first time I wrote the story. The second time in 04, they actually said, oh yeah, they're flawed lists, and we're seeing this now again. Oh, with the flawed, flawed lists of illegal alien voters, of, of, for, of fraudulent voters, the flawed lists. See, so when you say, when the U.S. media, which I have a section called I'm Depressed, and it's about <laughs> what I call American journalistic lazy assism, okay? They, they, the way that they report is they get, they say, oh, the Democrats say the earth is round and the Republicans say the earth is flat and, um, and that there are dragons at the end and, you know, there's, you know, we can't, we're balanced. That's the best. In fact, in there, I quote um, National Petroleum Radio um, saying, I get, I, 
didn't get that right. Um, the reporter actually said about the alien voters that there is good, that the Republicans have good evidence, good evidence that there are alien voters on the voter rolls, you know, like from Mars and stuff. Alien voters on the voter rolls. Good evidence, says NPR. And I'm picking on them because they're the best. Not like the foxhole, the peacock, the eyeball. <laughs> which was, used to be just a pimple on, it's not an eyeball, it's a pimple on Viacom's rectum. But, oh. Um, now, they're the best. Strong, I, I, I try to contact NPR. What was the strong evidence? Now, if, in BBC, if we say that there's strong evidence that there are illegal voters, that's saying someone's committed a crime, so we would have to find the criminal. So I said, so where is, do you have a name or something? Do you have a name or something? Oh, no. They had evidence. Did you check, the, did you find the voter? I mean, see, one thing about voter fraud, it's really easy to catch. It's insanely easy to catch. People hand you their name, their address, their social security number, last four digits. You can't miss them unless you don't want to find them. In case you'd rather like with bin Laden, just look, but never find, because that's much more valuable. See, because if you looked and found, let me explain. Uh, there was no flawed felon list in 2000. There's no flawed felon list now. I've gone through the list. There's not one, not one, zero, none. Illegal voter, not one, not one. And I can tell you this because I went to the Attorney General of Florida and said, now, if you found an illegal voter, would you arrest them? It's a felony crime, absolutely. I said, here's a list of 94,000 from Katherine Harris. <laughs> Where do we begin? I'll go with you, film it, bust them. And he said, you're kidding. It's just a list. It's just the presidency of the United States. It's just a list. 181,000 illegal alien voters in Florida. I told the governor of Florida, Scott, I said, listen, if you find one in a thousand illegal alien vote, it's really unusual. Someone is an illegal alien and they submit their name and address to the state. <laughs> wow. They want more names from the federal government. That's what the fight is about, right? And NPR, you know, one side says it's the other side said, why do they want names? They should want federal troops. We got the biggest crime wave in American history, 181,000 people committing a massive act, felonious crime. Why aren't we rounding them up? Because I said, well, you get fined one in 1,000, just 181, bring them to me, give me their names, and I will eat your underpants in the Capitol Rotunda, and I'm still hungry. <laughs> one in 1,000, yeah. And oh, and, yeah, NPR, the, the evidence is that one time they actually deported someone named Juan Gonzalez. <laughs> and there's someone on the voter rolls in Florida named Juan Gonzalez. <laughs> Welcome to America. Now, what do they do with the databases? That's the simple stuff. I just gave you one, purging. There's nine ways. I'm not going to keep you here tonight with the nine ways. It's one dirty trick of getting you to get billionaires and ballot bandits. Uh, second one, caging. Okay, now, told you about Karl Rove. He has a quarter billion dollars. Quarter billion dollars. It doesn't have it. Cro Amer Crossroads is not his, a super PAC, as it's called. One end is a super PAC. Mostly, it is a social welfare organization. It's a charity. Remember, I said besides Citizens United, underneath quietly was Speech Now, which was the, those charities, Committee for Our Children's Future, Christian Coalition, all these social welfare organizations whose welfare in, seems to involve finding BLA voters all over the country and going, Psh! did you know one of the nice statistics I found in those files that they won't let us look at anymore is that in the last two years, 22 million voters have been purged from the voter rolls of America. 22 million, one in five voters in the swing state of Colorado by the Republican Secretary of State done so quietly. 
that when I told the Democratic governor that he just lost a fifth of his voters, he didn't know about it. They're good. They're really good. Okay, they're really good. And no one will stand up for these voters because they're fraudulent voters. See, the fraudulent voter, that's like the new terrorist sleeper cell, the red menace, the yellow peril. They're coming to get us. They're swimming across the Gulf of Mexico to vote, steal our elections, the fraudulent voter. They just can't find any. In fact, according to Tova Wang, Dr. Tova Wang, who did a study for these guys, she comes from a heritage from the Koch Foundation, and she, um, but she's a really honest professor, statistician. She was brought in as an expert to count the fraudulent voters, and she wrote a report called Voter Intimidation, Voter Suppression in America, because what she found is she said the crime in voting is not what the voters do, it's what's done to them. And she wrote that report for the uh, U.S. Um, Elections Assistance Commission, and they changed the title of the report to Fraudulent Voting in America. And she said that it's more likely that you will get hit by lightning than commit an act of voting fraud. You know, they want the ID. That's all about, like, you will actually use someone else's name and go in and vote for them. You know, oh, I'm George Bush. Give me that. People don't do that. In fact, actually, I looked it up. It's 60 times more likely you'll get hit by lightning than c commit an act of fraudulent voting. Only six a year. And yet, remember that number? Six million votes and voters get lost to stop the six fraudulent voters. One million votes, citizens lose their rights for one fraudulent voter. And it's not just any citizens. It's not the ones at the billionaire's brunch, okay? It's not at, they're not at the billionaire's brunch. That's the point. And it's not partisan because it's all about class war is, is the story. It's about those who have and those who don't. And when they, the point is that those who have ain't gonna give you the right to have yours because they want all of it. Now, how? Carl Rove, Data Trust, quarter billion dollars, social welfare organization. What do they do? They have this big data mining operation. They were sending out letters to voters. Hi, voter. First class, do not forward. And when the letter came back, they would go into a cage, physical cage actually, and they called those caged voters. Then they made up lists, thousands and thousands and thousands of names of caged voters, because these are fraudulent voters, obviously voting, because remember they said, do not forward. So if they're not at that address, they're obviously fraudulent voters, right? Well, who are they? Well, they sent letters to old Jewish ladies in Miami in August, who are snowbirds, tend to go north. Okay, so do not forward. They could have their votes challenged. See, they went after the elderly of Zion. And um, it's not that they don't like Jewish voters, they just don't like bluish voters. But that was a very small group. The big groups there, page after page, I found of homeless shelters. Page after page of, of students living in dormitories at traditionally black colleges, letters sent to them in August when they're not there. Now, and my favorite, or my, the most unusual, you gotta look at page 116 of Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, and you'll see Naval Air Station Jacksonville. Naval Air Station, Naval Air Station, Naval Air Station, military bases. They were sending letters to soldiers registered at their military base, and do not forward. So if the soldier wasn't at their base, they would challenge them as a fraudulent voter. This is under contract with the Republican National Committee. Long may it wave, right? Now, this is what they did. By the way, in case you are wondering, yes, it is legal for a soldier to send in an absentee ballot 
from a war zone. You can vote from under a Humvee. It's perfectly legal, Mr. Rove. But, and here's the wonderful nature of this crime. I talked to one of the soldiers on the list, and he said, I got to vote. I said, you what do you mean? He said, I mailed in my ballot. I said, was it counted? Well, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Because they challenge it. You don't even know it's challenged, and it's in the garbage. 488,000 absentee ballots mailed in, not counted. Okay? I don't know what the new system is in Washington. Oregon's the only system that I know of so far that has an app. They, they will contact you if there's a challenge to your ballot. I don't know about Washington. Maybe they do. But I'll tell you this. They sure as hell don't in those swing states. Okay. There will be 26 million ballots mailed in and 2 million. There, every expert says minimum 2 million will be challenged and lost and put in the dumpster. Soldiers, but not just any soldiers, BLA soldiers. Okay, now, Bobby Kennedy, who wrote the beginning and later chapter in the book, I'm not a lawyer. He is, dean of the law school. And he said what they did because they targeted people by race and religion. He said, that's a crime. Karl Rove should be in jail. <laughs> that's just his opinion. He's dean of the law school, and his daddy wrote the law, <laughs> Voting Rights Act. And he said, his assistant, Tim Griffin, should be in jail, but he's not in jail. He's in Congress. I want you to know that when I expose this matter, well, I'll tell you what happened when I expose this matter, but he has a, you know what, he has an assistant too that was involved, a guy named Matt Rhodes. He's not in jail either. Where's Matt Rhodes today? Oh, he's campaign manager for Mitt Romney. <laughs> All right, now, is it about partisanship? No. Who busted these guys? I, I, you know, by the way, I got these because well, Carl sent me and, and Tim sent me their uh, emails, the caging list. They, they don't always do that. <laughs> but, you know, Tim Griffin, congressman, is not the sharpest knife in the drawer. And he was, he sent out to, you know, the Republican National Committee chairman, state chairman, dot org. You know, but dot, the RNC dot org as opposed to rnc.com. rnc.org is owned by my friend, John Wooden, who sent me the emails as soon as he got them. <laughs> I'm not allowed to look at them under BBC rules if I, it's not an email addressed to me, unless there's evidence of criminality. And plenty of evidence of criminality. So that's what those, see, I don't care, frankly, if they want to spend a quarter billion dollars on ads telling us we need a commander in chief whose horse gets stuck in the car elevator, I don't care. <laughs> God bless America, this is free speech. Do say what you want. Sell me whatever soap you want, okay? Don't make fun, by the way, of Romney's car elevators. Those cars are so old, they can't take the stairs. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Yeah. So, but it is about Willie Steen, right? I'm not gonna hang you up much longer. It's about Willie Steen. It's about the people who can't be here on those voter rolls and aren't here tonight, right? The people who suddenly disappear. And it isn't just Republicans doing it. And this is the great evil, okay? One of the guys that, by the way, blew the whistle when I blew the whistle, I, got, I went to a federal prosecutor who was ready to bust the story as well. David Iglesias, a Republican the Republican prosecutor for New Mexico. Captain David Iglesias, who's also a military JAG. So he's a federal prosecutor, and he said he was given these caging lists, the cage voters, and he was told, go find the cage voters and arrest them, the fraudulent voters. So he said, okay, I'm going to get them put on his badge, ran across. He said he went all over the mesas of New Mexico and he couldn't find one. He just found, you know, old ladies with common Hispanic names. They were citizens. In fact, 
the Mexicanos of New Mexico were citizens of America before it was America. <laughs> really. And um, so he said that they're Americans, you know, these are, uh, these are fraudulent voters. Yeah, they had funny addresses like this, you go and native, at the native reservations and the Pueblos, because they had addresses like second house from the post office at the Pueblo. It's not fraudulent, it's poverty, okay? So he said, I can't find any. You know what they told him? You know what the Rove gang told him? The, they said, first they said, well, arrest someone. He said, what? They said, arrest, just, so we'll just arrest him. He said, it's not the Soviet Union. We don't arrest people. They said, well, you can let him go after the election. He wouldn't. No, that wasn't his America. And so they did fire him. And, you know, it's one of the, again, the way the stories come out. The press play, the firing of prosecutors is political. They, they, were, they were removed for political reasons. They weren't removed for political reasons. Everyone was a Republican. Everyone endorsed George Bush for president. It wasn't political, it was criminal. These were all eight prosecutors who said we are sworn to uphold the law not to hunt down innocent citizens, but only Iglesias would come forward and say what was really going on, that they wouldn't take part in the crime, that they were lawmen, not lawbreakers. Iglesias stood up, gave me the info, now. And when they fired him, that was a tougher one. So they needed cause. So it was absenteeism. He didn't show up for his job as federal prosecutor. Well, and that, and it was true. He was missing for weeks because they should have known he would stand up because if you look in the book, you'll see a picture of Tom Cruise, the guy who plays Iglesias in A Few Good Men. That's the guy who says he wants the truth. So they said he was absent. Yeah, he was absent because the military told him to be the chief prosecutor at the Bosnian war crimes trial. So he was, when he was in Bosnia, they said he was absent and they fired him. God bless America. Now, that's how it works. And you know what he did? They didn't like something else. You know that he busted Democrats? He arrested Democrats for vote fraud? and vote theft, and Karl Rove was steaming mad. Why? Wasn't that the game? No. Because what happens was that there were Acoma Pueblo natives, in, uh, the Native Americans there. I was down there talking to the chief. They opposed a uranium mine that was going into their sacred mountain, ripping into their sacred mountain. And a less sacred issue was that it was poisoning their fields. But the local Democratic Party was getting a little cash from the mining companies. They decided they weren't going to get, let no Indians get in the way. So they knocked off their names as fraudulent voters. Same trick. Fraudulent voters. And they said, and when the Pueblo natives came to vote, as they have forever, same, they go vote at the church, and they said, you can't vote, but we'll give you a provisional ballot. This is another trick. There's nine ways to steal an election. One way is the provisional placebo ballot. <laughs> oh. See, because they, they, after the, the felon wipeout, the Congressional Black Caucus won on the right for you, in case your name is purged wrongly, that you get a, a provisional ballot. But they never, they got the right to the ballot, but never the right to have it counted. So the ballots were sent in to the, the county officials. And, but it was missing the proper envelopes, so they threw out all the ballots. Of course, the county officials gave them the wrong envelopes. Iglesias arrested those officials who were Democrats. But again, see, the GOP said, no, 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 no. See, because that's about officials suppressing votes, stealing votes from voters. That's not the game. They don't want that game opened up. Yeah, the Democrats stole those 200 votes while the Republicans had stolen 20,000 that same election. 
same way. They didn't want the captain opening that can of worms, but both, that's one of the problems. People say, why don't the Democrats stand up? Well, first of all, the biological issue, jellyfish have, don't have spines. But, I mean, you saw Al Gore did speak here, right? And um, the other is that they do it, too. Not as well, not as big, not as well funded. Republicans have super duper cyber databases and the Democrats still have their floppy disks, but it's dirty all the way around. So that's one of the reasons. They're all in it differently. The big wipeout, you know, how could George Bush have won New Mexico, which is all Democratic, all minority voters overwhelmingly, because the Hispanic Democratic vote was wiped out. There was one precinct for soldiers again, all soldier votes, not one vote for President of the United States, not one. I called up to the Secretary of State and said, not one vote? Not one vote? They, I mean, they actually mailed in ballots from overseas, hundreds and hundreds of ballots, but not one voted? They just mailed in blank ballots? She says, and she said, those people just can't make up their minds. It was a very poor, it was all Hispanic and uh, Native American soldiers, those people. Becky Vigil Heron, a Hispanic Democrat, I'm glad to say that um, through some of my efforts, uh, she's on her way to prison. But the, but they do, Democrats hold firing squads in a circle. And they, see, because everyone goes after the same voter, the poor voter, because it's about control of the Democratic Party there. It's about control, of the, just the same as in Chicago, when Obama knocked off and challenged the signatures of legal voters in his district so he could run unopposed, knocked off his opponent. He learned early. I was there. I lived in his district. Okay, now, that's how it works. Everyone gets a little dirty. So then the real dirt, no one can blow the whistle. Now, so nine ways to steal an election. Nine ways to take away Willie Steen's vote, caging, bouncing ballots, provisional ballots, absentee ballots in the garbage, it, you know, it goes on and on. Sounds pretty grim, and billionaires run it all, the Koch brothers, right? And so what can we do? Duh. It's just, you know, we can't, they're all the same. And uh, what's the point? They can steal my vote. It's kind of like a new kind of valley girl politics <laughs> raging across America. Knock it off. Okay. All right. Now, because we have a solution. They have nine ways to steal the election, but we have seven ways to beat the ballot bandits, which is at the back of billionaires and ballot bandits. A little line, you just cut it out, you send it around, you copy it any way you can. You go to ballotbandits.org and you can download a um, copy of, of the big poster. You can get the details of the poster, uh, ballotbandits.org from our foundation. No charge, I want this around. Seven ways to beat the ballot bandits, things you should do. One, you can't even do the first one. It says, don't go postal, don't mail in your vote, for God's sake. Well, that's gone here. Um, but one of the things is, of course, like register. Register to vote. You say, oh, I register to vote. You're not taking notes? 22 million people knocked off the voter rolls. My assistant, should I dock in his pay? He shows up to vote. They said, you're an inactive voter. He says, I voted for everything, but you know, including the PDA president. They said, sorry. He didn't check. He made the poster, but he didn't check. <laughs> he lost his vote, okay? Don't assume you're registered. You better go online and better check that out. That's your job. Oh, yeah, I, oh my God. We have to do all these things now to protect their vote. Seven ways to beat the ballot bans. Think of it as your ballot condom so, for safe voting. <laughs> You have to have it. Now, it's in the book. We have some posters here you can donate to the foundation so we can make more posters. That's what we're going to do. The more you, you throw in the bucket, we'll, the more posters we'll make. It's not for one candidate or another, really. That's, you know, that, that's for other speakers and not for me. Uh, 
uh, you know, um, I grew up on the wrong side of the railroad tracks in Los Angeles, Chicano neighborhood. And, um, you know, we were just supposed to go off to Vietnam, and if we didn't get our legs blown off next to those cor corporate guys in the foxholes with us, those Exxon holding the gun, if we didn't get our legs blown off or our head blown off, we came back to work at the Chevy plant, which then was shipped overseas. I'm going to tell you, did that too in the book. But they took away my friends' lives, and then they took away their jobs, and they even took away the railroad tracks. But damn it, I'm not going to let them take away the vote. That's not what's going to happen. So now, this is what we're going to do. It's about what we can do. And if you think we can't do it, come on. Yeah, of course. Every generation has had to fight for the vote, the suffragette movement, the abolitionist movement, the big anti-globalization movement called the United States of America when we fought against the World Trade Organization called the British Empire and won the vote, took it away from the royals. Civil War, Martin Luther King took a bullet. I'm asking you to take a book. <laughs> Jeez. A comic book. His son, Martin Luther King III, loves it too, by the way. Seriously. Um, as, you know, and in the back there are these wonderful media resources to get the real information, unpolluted. Action groups rock the vote, Operation Rainbow Push, LULAC, the big Latin Americans, uh, Latinos United, excuse me, I'm getting this wrong. Forgive me, lo siento. League of United Latin American Citizens, biggest Latino organization in America, of course. 11 million Hispanics, citizens, who are not registered, not for lack of trying. California, you know that they knocked off 42% of the new voter for registrations were disallowed in California by the Republican Secretary of State. So you think it's just Florida, heat of the night, you know? Old Dixie, well, it's surfing USA, too. As Jesse Jackson said, who's working with me on this, he said, you know, we've, we've marched too long, we've worked too hard, we've died too young to let them take this vote away. So we will get the books because they are our weapon of mass instruction. They are what it is, our way of getting out. We don't copyright all this material. Spread it around, put it in your newsletters, your website. This is not, this is not a for-profit publication. We're not trying to hold this hostage, the information we wanted out. I'll be giving um, films to Amy, putting it on the air. We're going to get these out. We're going to get out the seven ways to beat the ballot bandits. That's your job. It's not passive. I don't want you to just get a book and hold it. This is, this is something for you to put, well, in Florida, you can't bring it into the polling booth, but you can bring a gun. So put it, it fits small to fit in, it's small to fit in your holster. So this is your freedom holster with your ballot condom. We've got work to do. We've got work to do. You know, like I said, I grew up in a Chicano neighborhood, and they just wanted to take it all. You know, all of it. Charles Koch... You know, he says he wants his fair share, and he wants all of it, all of this, and those ballots. And so he's created the Themis machine that makes Karl Rove's machine look like a Thomas Jefferson memorial. They're not done. But he may be too big to jail now. I do too big to fail, but he ain't too big to jail. I want him to get all of it, including his Miranda rights. So let's get to work. Thank you so much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sign books. I'm going to sign posters. Donate for the posters. I don't sell them. There's books. 
and I will answer every single question, because I know you have many, though most of the answers are in the books. And please join me at ballotbandits.org, gregpalace.com, to keep, get the new information that we are producing constantly, because the investigation is not over, and your work has just begun. Thank you.